That back one's off the ground. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty decent flex. For F350 axles. Solid axle, at least. I'd have to, yeah. Yeah, it's not worth rolling. I still gotta drive this thing to Alaska. Can't roll it yet. Yeah, you look good. Come your way a little bit. Just slow. You're about to drop off. Oh yeah. You go passenger a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's no problem. Thing is sweet looking. Especially this little mud character now. Well, I'm sitting in the back seat of the Bronco. Uh, tomorrow, if uh, everything goes to plan, we're supposed to be heading north to Alaska. We're leaving out of Texas, kind of just outside of Kerrville, Texas, up to uh, Chickaloon, Alaska, which is going to be anywhere from, I don't know, 4,500 miles plus, depending on how many deviations it take. But yeah, so pretty exciting trip. Um, this is something that I've been looking forward to for a while. This, uh, this Bronco's kind of got a pretty wild backstory. Um, I, uh, maybe I'll, I'll put a link in the, the uh, video to Matt's, uh, videos. Cause he does a pretty good job of, uh, kind of explaining his part in this process, but long story short, I'll try and surmise it in a minute or so. This Bronco, it's a 1983 Ford Bronco. Um, and this was my brother's, this is his first car. Um, he worked on it all in high school, put a lift kit on it, put these like big old wide 15 inch super swampers on it. And. Um, kind of had a lot of fun with it, got in some trouble, of course, with it as well. And then, uh, you know, it's kind of subsequently he, he taught me how to drive a manual on this thing. And then, you know, I have a lot of memories with him, um, in it as well. Fast forward a couple of years and, uh, he unfortunately died in a plane crash in 2013. This Bronco was at, uh, my parents, uh, kind of farm more or less, and just kind of sat, um, I'd moved to Alaska. Uh, not too long after that and didn't really have the means to come down do all the work that was required to kind of keep it running and then didn't really have a whole lot to uh to do with it after that so um, i think i actually reached out to matt and asked him if he wanted it because i was you know just i knew it was someone that uh he had, had memories in it as well and it was someone that would take care of it um and kind of the, the goal was just that he would you know do a couple little things fix it up here and there and then uh just have fun with it you know maybe take his kids around maybe do some mud and do, you know, whatever you want to do with it, more or less. And, um, he ended up taking it to, I think one of the high school shop to kind of help work on it. And I think the project start went from like a, uh, just simple, you know, replace the fuel pump, change distributor, whatever it needed to be done. I don't honestly remember what exactly was wrong with it. Turned into a strip down the frame, pull every single nut and bolt out of this thing. And, um, ended up being kind of a, a ground up rebuild from, uh, over the course of like five years. Like I said, all, uh, all of Matt's videos document that pretty well. Um, so it's definitely worth a, a watch if you are interested. Um, but now it's got a brand new 427. Um, I think it made over 500 horsepower at the crank. So maybe low 400s at the rear wheels. Um, and it's got a new transmission, new transfer case. It's got F-350 axles off of 2005 um, Super Duty on it. Um, it's got a 6-inch lift. It's got 37-inch tires and some pretty sweet Corbo seats in it. Uh, their interior is kind of um, updated as well. So it's kind of like a little bit of a rest of mod. Um, but anyways, um, I guess kind of circling back to where we're going with this, where he um ended up giving it back to me um out of uh you know super generous gesture he said that uh he felt that you know it was something that uh um he wanted me to have and i was super grateful and um definitely uh words don't quite describe um what that meant and so now we're gonna drive it up to alaska to where i live and uh hopefully gonna document some of the adventures along the way hopefully uh, nothing too bad, but uh, I'm, I'd be shocked if everything went smooth. So we'll see what happens. Well, the Bronco didn't have a receiver hitch, so we bought a little uh, kind of modified one that we can bolt on. It's not anything super special, but it's just something temporary that we can, we've got an aluminum rack that we're gonna put behind the Bronco so that way we can put all the fuel and whatever leftover stuff uh, in the back so we're not smelling vapors and whatnot. But uh, anyways, it mounts 
via receiver hitch. So we got to kind of figure out a way to mock one and uh, make it up, or not mock it up, but make it work. Well, we got the hitch bolted up. Uh, we got this lip underneath here, so we can't slide that any further back to get any further purchase in these four bolts. But bigger problem is how long this arm is. It's got a huge lever on uh, on those two bolts. I'm planning on carrying an extra 26 gallons of fuel. So we're looking at roughly 150 pounds uh, whenever everything's full and by the time we get on the frost heaves. Once we put the weight of the fuel, it's gonna be really putting a lot of torque. I mean, you can see how much I can move it just with the weight of my hand. So I think we're gonna chop this thing here and then shorten it, probably redrill this, shorten this, and. We suck it in another another foot or so and then that'll help but uh, eventually i think what we're gonna have to do is uh run a strap from the back end of this up to front well today's the day got it all loaded out i think we packed this thing to the gills oh. all kinds of stuff camping gear extra tire tools jack uh, um food Got my brother's old skis. We've got a uh, wind generator for my cabin. We've got extra fluids, um, probably all sorts of other little stuff that uh, I'm forgetting, but hopefully enough to get us rolling. So today we're just heading to Oklahoma City. That's where my sister lives. We're gonna stay with her. It's not exactly on the way uh, to Moab. It's kind of, I, th I think it only gains us like three hours. We end up going four or five hours out of the way, but worth it to see family. So. We're going to do that. Uh, I think it's about an eight hour drive today. Big unknowns for today. We have no idea what kind of gas mileage this thing gets, which um, obviously we know it's not going to be great. But it uh, the big thing with that is we don't know what our range is because we know we have a 33 gallon tank, but we have no idea what our mileage is. So that'll be big to figure out. And then this will probably be the first trip that we're going to put, uh, you know, right under 500 miles. So be kind of the big first shakedown test and uh, we'll just see what happens. quick detour to get some gas cans so far it seems to be uh doing pretty well though got the gas tanks loaded up dad had to stop and look at an airplane pretty sweet dc6 so i had to stop and take a look So you said there was a, like a... It was an ast was an astrodome, you know, uh, okay. a, a glass uh, bubble. Uh -huh. And they climb up and do star sightings, at sun star and sun sightings for uh, navigation. Huh. And the navigator would come down here at the table and he'd chart out where they were over the ocean and then every half an hour he'd hand up a, a heading for the pilot. Okay. You know, because that's, that's how they... But during the war, I mean, they were just going across the ocean constantly, Pacific and Atlantic, hauling stuff, so... That's how they navigate it, just with a huh. sexton and tourists. Wow, that's wild. It's amazing, isn't it? One of the pilots just explained that uh, this is his last flight to find a museum in Utah. They had to uh, put 1,500 gallons of gas to get it there, so I was complaining about uh, how much uh, we're going to have to put into this thing, but I guess there's always worse. miles in so we're about to find out what our uh, gas miles has been 
hoping that we don't see this thing go over 20 gallons because that means we're getting less than 10 miles a gallon which is uh definitely not not uh, ideal but we're hoping that we can get somewhere around like 12 this is our goal that's what we're hoping for but we'll see we have literally no idea so yeah we'll watch this number and make sure it doesn't go or not make sure but hope it doesn't go past 20. 15 gallons hopefully it stops 420. Oh, there we go. So just over uh, 11 and a half miles a gallon, which uh, it's not too bad. We, I've been driving probably 65 to 70 most of the way. Probably, yeah, 65 to 70. And uh, I had a decent tailwind, so probably 11 is gonna be a little more accurate for the rest of the trip. I guess we'll clean this off. Got your choice of Porsche GTS or AMG Mercedes. My sister has a Porsche and a Mercedes in the garage and couch rests or little arm rests that Bluetooth charge your phone. I live in a tiny house. I messed up. So the plane we saw is DC-6, as you heard, is built in 1942. It was originally owned by the Navy um, and if I understood them correctly, it was actually used in the Berlin, Berlin airlift. Um, so pretty sweet piece of history there that just kind of flew in. It was on its way for its last flight to fly to a museum from there. And, uh, uh I think after the Navy, it changed hands a couple times. It said it was used with the, uh, forest service to, uh, fight fires. It was used for some other contract company. I didn't quite catch the name for, uh, fuel or oil spills. Um, just kind of had some, some real neat uses and uh, it was kind of cool just to, to see that plane. Well, let me try this is a mistake. Uh, Adventure Park. It's like 8, I don't know, 20 in the morning. These guys uh, don't normally open up till late, but uh, they're super kind, let us in early. So it's kind of uh, where I think we're, what, 45 minutes southeast of uh, Oklahoma City. Say hi to my sister. And uh, we're going to go do some wheeling around in here. Oh, is there roof then? Oh, oh you're good. And uh, we're going to do some wheeling and uh, go see what kind of trouble we can get in. So yesterday we drove just shy of 500 miles. I think it was right exactly at 495. Um, the second tank gas, we actually ended up getting 13.1 miles a gallon, which is not bad. We had an even stronger tailwind and we were kind of on the highway. So nice, easy, easy uh, smooth rolling. So, um, but anyways, Bronco passed first test and uh, we'll just kind of keep rolling from here. I think later on we're gonna head to Colorado. I'm not sure exactly where we're at. It's gonna depend on how much we spend here, how much time we spend here this morning. And then uh, we'll just uh, see where we're at. Putting the cripple in the back.
Well, maybe, yeah. You can see right there, you're getting a little bit of rub on the fender well. That's pretty good. Oh, big step there. <laughs> this side's full droop. Drug them a little, bent them up. Well, big thanks to uh, Becca and Shannon at uh, Ravine Outdoor Adventure Park for opening up the place early and letting us come uh, do a little wheeling around in the Bronco. We got to kind of flex it a lot more than I've gotten the chance to in the past, and got to have fun with uh, sister and brother-in-law and dad and tow. But uh, anyways, we're gonna hit the road and head north because we still got a lot of driving. Hopefully make it somewhere in Colorado. We'll see exactly. <laughs> 